All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory due to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Kakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and salutations to the hopeful elect out of Torah and his truth. I'm Pathaka Moth, Jim S. Dallas, and, just, and I'm just coming back at you with a really quick hit, uh, lesson, and I'm going to simply entitle this, Manifest Destiny Has Another Side. Part two is on the way, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, the first thing I want to do is uh, get what Manifest Destiny is in case you don't didn't know, you know, so I just typed in Manifest Destiny in Google and uh, it pulled up this right here. And it says, I'm gonna read just the, the first part of this, this little sex uh, excerpt from the uh, Wikipedia. And it says, Manifest Destiny was a 19th century belief that American settlers were destined to expand westward across North America. And that's exactly uh, uh, what that doctrine or belief is all about, you know, is the belief that the expansion uh, uh, of the U.S. throughout the American continents was justified and inevitable. You know what I'm saying? They felt like it was ordained of the Lord, which it, it, at the end of the day it was. You know what I'm saying? If you want to be technical and get into, you know, all these things had to happen. You know what I'm saying? The scriptures say, uh, uh, and of course, when when you understand that, you know, it's going into, you know, them going throughout uh, 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 the American continents where Gad was, man. You know, Gad and, and uh, uh, of course, uh, 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 the so-called Mexicans were here. You know what I'm saying? Issachar and, you know, and, and uh, these uh, these devils thought it to be uh, justified and, and inevitable that they that they go through conquering, pillaging, you know, and, and conquering the land, uh, land, the lands and taking it from from the, uh, the northern kingdom, man. You know what I'm saying? So and they and they uh, uh, labeled it as a doctrine or belief of manifest destiny, man. You know what I'm saying? Which at the end of the day. You know, these devils aren't taking it into account that that has another side, man. Part two is on the way. You know what I'm saying? Because the destiny of Esau is all throughout the scriptures and it's not good. Nothing good is, is, is going to come about it, you know, and we're going to get into some scriptures and, 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 and show what his manifest destiny is. You know what I'm saying? So this is not to say all be all. It's not the end. You know what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, scriptures say Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth in second Ezra, the sixth chapter in verse nine, man. You know what I'm saying? So that right there tells you that it's not the end. There were two blessings given when you read in Genesis, the 27th chapter, man, one to Esau and which was temporary carnal cause he cried and one to Jacob, which was the kingdom of heaven, man, the blessings of the kingdom of heaven. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, there's something else after this, man. So manifest destiny has another side, man. Part two is coming. It's on the way. So uh, I just want to read a couple of these as well. Uh, it says, what is manifest destiny in simple terms? And it says an overview manifest destiny was the idea that white Americans were div divinely ordained to settle the entire continent of North America. Ideology of Salakia. Yeah, ideology, the ideology of Manifest Destiny inspired a variety of measures designed to remove or destroy the native population. There it is, man. You know, to remove or destroy them. You know what I'm saying? Which a lot of them were destroyed. They killed a lot of na uh, uh, so-called Native Americans, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, the Northern Kingdom, you know. So, you know, that's and they called it Manifest Destiny, which there's another side to that, man. These devils are going to have to pay for these things, man. It says, what is Manifest Destiny and in, in what is the belief in manifest destiny so like you manifest destiny the night in the 19th century doctrine or belief that they oh, okay con con we just read that i just went into that i just read that uh so let's keep going this is uh what is the what is the god-given right in manifest destiny and it says manifest destiny was the belief that the united states had the divine right to expand westward and that all such exploration and expansion was God ordained. The term manifest destiny was first used in 1845. So, uh, and there's some dude named John something. Uh, I don't want to go into it. So you can look it up if you, if you, uh, want to uh, know the guy's name, but, uh, yeah, man, which at the end of the day, like I said, it was ordained by the most high man. You know what I'm saying? These things had to happen. They're written. They're in the scriptures, man. You know what I'm saying? The Lord, uh, uh, gave the earth into the hand of the wicked, you know, gave him that power and authority to do these things, man. You know what I'm saying? And uh, 
it says right here, it says, what was the what was the manifest destiny for the Native Americans? Manifest destiny is the philosophy that expansion westward was a duty for white Americans to settle the continent throughout Salakia, settle the continent through conquering the land. This process of expansion was at the expense and devastation of native people and culture. Exactly. The expense and devastation. So again, these devils are not going to get away with these things. So I want to drop down real quick and just get, get a few more, few more points. It says manifest destiny. Uh, as a matter of fact, it says, what were the three main reasons for believing in manifest destiny? Manifest destiny. It says the assumption of the unique moral virtue of the United States, which this is the most vile, you know, uh, uh, non-righteous, wicked places on the uh, on the planet Earth, man. You know what I'm saying? America is not a virtuous place, man. Yeah, the scriptures call it a a, a, a pot of scum, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not virtuous at all, man. You know what I'm saying? This is that lady, uh, uh, that whore that sits upon the beast or rides upon the beast, man. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, the putrefying sores, uh, you know, the skirt being lifted and all that. Yeah, yeah, man, that's that's America, man. She's that lady. She's that woman. Uh, it says the assertion of its mission to redeem the world by the spread of Republican government and more generally the American way of life. Yeah, man. Uh, uh, just like them Greeks, man, you know, doing the Hellenization uh, uh, period, man. You know, these it's, it's the same devils back doing the same things again, man. You know, there's no new thing under the sun. That which was then is now, man. It says the faith in the nations divinely ordained the Salakia, the faith in the nations divinely ordained destiny to succeed in this mission you know which again all goes back to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai he gave them the power to do these things and he sent them forth man you know so these things were basically ordained uh, uh, by the Lord man they're right you know what I'm saying but what they didn't take into account that there's another side to this thing this devil has an end man you know what I'm saying things are going to change you know you know, that 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 changing of the guard, everything flipping, you know what I'm saying? So they they didn't uh uh they didn't take these things into account, man. As a matter of fact, it's uh uh what is that scripture? Uh as a matter of fact, real quick, let's go uh you know, he didn't he didn't take into account that uh you know, there's a time that he was gonna have to pay back everything and he was gonna be destroyed, man. Uh what is that in Isaiah uh is it 47? Let me look in Isaiah 47. Hold on one sec. Bear with me. Uh, let me take the parallel off. Don't need it right this minute. Hey, really, bro? This is Isaiah chapter 47. And let me drop down to... I start at verse seven and it reads Isaiah 47 and seven is, and it reads, and thou saidest, I shall be a lady forever so that thou didst not lay these things to thy, to thy heart. You know, it wasn't on their mind. Neither didst remember the latter end of it. Yeah, man. You know, the latter end, you know, yeah, the Lord was going to give you uh, uh, the earth for a period of time. You know what I'm saying? That little season, you know, and uh, you were going to, deceive the four quarters of the earth and do all your nonsense all your madness and folly and your madness your, your your wickedness you know you're gonna set up shop and go to work man you know but the latter end you didn't take it to heart man you know what i'm saying that it wasn't going that wasn't going to remain that was temporal that was carnal man it was temporal you know the actual blessing of the kingdom of heaven was given to uh uh jacob man you know what i'm saying by way of his father isaac which we know in the incarnation is Yahweh Shai, man. So this is Isaiah chapter 47 and verse 8. It says, Therefore, hear now this, thou that art given to pleasures, that dwellest carelessly, which is these Edomites in America and all these people that's under that vibration, that sayest in thine heart, in their mind, their lobs, in the, in the, in the uh, Hebrew, I am and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow 
which is very proud to say to the to the most high man neither shall i know the loss of children which both of those things they're going to know you know they're going to know widowhood and they're going to know the loss of children man verse 9 it says but these two things shall come to thee in a moment in one day the loss of children and widowhood they shall come upon thee in their perfection yes their completion complete destruction for the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thine enchantments which these devils are all about man and it's everywhere you can see it all over this place you know so manifest destiny has another side man you know what i'm saying as a matter of fact the script these things were written and supposed to happen the, script, the the lord said which when you read you're supposed to deal with the prophecies when you read in revelation the 19th chapter yahweh said he's the spirit of prophecy uh second Ezra the fifth uh the 15th chapter uh, Salakia, the second Ezra, uh 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 Sirach, Salakia, 39 and 1, we're supposed to be occupied in prophecy. Second Ezra, Second Ezra 15 and 1, the Lord told us to speak into the ears of his people the words of prophecy. And in 1 Peter, uh, I believe it's 1 Peter, the first chapter, around verse 19, it says, uh, uh, we have a more sure word of prophecy. And of course, it's, the Lord is all about his prophecies, man. You know, Habakkuk, the second chapter, Isaiah, the 34th chapter. You know, it's all about prophecies, you know, and the prophecies give uh, tell you that these things were supposed to, uh, uh, to happen, man, and gives that other side of it all, that manifest destiny. So the, real quick, let's get Genesis, the 49th chapter, and we're going to drop down to verse uh, 19. This is Genesis 49 and 19. It says, here is that prophecy. Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. So a troop is going to overcome uh, uh, Gad, man. That manifest destiny that's prophesied, you know, when the devils, you know, went all through uh, uh, the American continents, you know, what I'm saying conquering, conquering and pillaging and, and, and destroying, man, you know, and killing uh, uh, the Native Americans, man, Jake, man, the northern kingdom. You know what I'm saying? But like it says at the end of it says, but he shall overcome at the last and we're at the last. So so that hey, these things have another side and, and, and he's about to be overcame. By manifest destiny, man, on himself, himself, you know what I'm saying? So these things, again, these things are written. So let's, uh, real quick, let's go over to Psalms, jump over to Psalms, the 50th chapter. And we're going to get this because these devils are in a trick bag. This is Psalms 50 and I'll start at verse 16. It says, but unto the wicked, the most I said, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? And these, div these devils did exactly that. They, they grabbed hold of this Bible that they were never supposed to put their hands on. And they did all manner of madness, man. They uh, took things out, added things, you know what I'm saying? Created Christianity, you know? That's the covenant of the Lord. Who told you to do that, man? You know, so the Lord is going to deal for these things, man. Verse 17, seeing thou hatest instruction and castest my word behind thee. Because they these devils don't, do, they don't give a damn about the Bible, man, or know what it says, man. You know what I'm saying? He's contrary. He's contrary to the Bible. He's the wicked. And the, the Lord created this dude. He's the vessel of, of, of dishonor, uh, 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 fit for wrath and destruction, man. You know what I'm saying? So it says, verse 18, when thou sawest a thief, then, then thou contendest with him and hast been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil and thy tongue frameth deceit. And they're always doing that, man. Their, their tongue is always framing deceit on uh, uh, the uh, biblical Israelites, man, the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. They keep them in their news, uh, 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 in their news sources, you know, lying, you know what I'm saying, making Jake look out, look, look like he's the, 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 the villain, you know what I'm saying, when, when the true villain on the planet are these Edomites, man, you know what I'm saying, but he frames that deceit, man, you know, making Jake, you know, looking, got uh, pointing the finger and getting everybody to look at Jake when it's him, that's going around doing all the destruction in the earth, man. You know, killing and pillaging and doing all the madness in the earth, bro. You know what I'm saying? So it says, uh, verse 20, it says, Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thy, thine own mother's son. And, of course, you know, this goes back to Jacob and Esau, which were brothers, man. You know what I'm saying? Of course, they didn't get alone. They were fighting in a room, womb from, from the very beginning. You know, and there's, that fight is still happening to this very day, man. But... They, it says, uh, thou sittest and speakest against thy brother, thou, thy slanderest thine own mother's son. You know what I'm saying? And that's exactly what these devils do. 
You know, they talk against Jake and slander us, man. You know what I'm saying? They go to the most high, you know, uh, uh, they're, they're, they're left hand priests, you know, trying to, uh, uh, of course, first he, 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 uh, uh, sets Jake up, you know what I'm saying? Which he's going to pay for. And, and Habakkuk, the second chapter goes into that, putting the bottle to the, to their mouth. You know, he fools Jake in many different forms and fashions and ways. And then he goes to the, to the Lord and, and, and tries to get the Lord to go against his people. You know, look at him, Lord. You know, he has them doing these things. And then you point that out, what he just made them do, basically set them up to do. You know what I'm saying? Which it says, whoa, you know, in, in Habakkuk, the second chapter. So they're going to have to pay for these things, man. You know, so he slanders his own mother's son, man. You know, as a matter of fact, again, in their news sources, you know, they'll make Jake look like like the, the worst thing on the planet, man, when actually he's the worst thing on the planet. You know, and have everybody a scared, uh, uh, afraid of Jake. Uh, uh, you know, they walk by and, and people lock their doors when they should walk by. Uh, they should lock their doors when this devil walks by. But everybody feels uh, safe and comfortable around these devils, you know, when he's the worst thing on the planet, man. But verse 21, it says, these things hast thou done. And I kept silence. Silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such in one as thyself. Yeah, they thought the Lord was with them. You know, they still say to this very day, these, these, these Edomite Christians, you know, they tell us, you know, that they, you know, they're proud as hell, man, you know, but, uh, yeah, they thought the Lord was with them, man. You know what I'm saying? And they're about to find out that he's not with them. It was a trick bag that he had them in and manifest destiny has a part two, another side, man. And, and part two is on the way. You know what I'm saying? So they're about to find that out. It says, and they're going to find out the Lord wasn't with them, but I will reprove thee, you know, correct them and see and, and set them, the Israelites, beginning starting with the elect, the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, set them in order before thine eyes, which that's happening as we speak. You know, you see all these, these uh, 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 different, uh, all throughout the four corners of the earth, these different camps uh, uh, setting up and, and Jake coming into this knowledge, man. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's us being set in order right before these people's faces and eyes and they don't know what they're looking at and he's reproving esau as we speak but you know that reproof is going to continue and go a little further man you know until this dude is destroyed it says verse 22 now consider this ye that forgot the most high lest i tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver you know so nobody's going to be able to deliver this devil out of what the lord is about to bring upon him you know and he's about to tear them to pieces, just like he just said, man. So manifest destiny has another side. This is not to say all be all. This is not it, man. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, again, just more things that this devil has done. As a matter of fact, it reminds me of something. Let's go to Psalms 55, because, you know, when these devils came over here, you know, they were accepted of the northern kingdom. And what did these devils do? You know, first of all, they bought a, a, a smallpox, you know, diseases and crap over here. And, and after that, you know. When Jake was trying to, you know, Jake taught civilize these devils, man. Then they turn around and stab him in the back, man. Broke over 400 treaties. Never did anything that they promised that they was going to do, man. You know, which is in the scriptures. All of these things are written, man. So this is Psalms 55. And uh, I'll start at verse uh, 20. Psalms 55 and 20, it says, he hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him, which is the Native Americans, the Northern Kingdom. It says he hath broken his covenant. Yeah, over 400 treaties, man. Never did anything he said he was going to do. It says the word, verse 21, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords because the sword is his blessing and he's the wicked and Jake is his natural born enemies man you know what i'm saying but you jake don't understand that and jake loved this devil man well he's gonna stab your ass when you're not looking you know the, the scriptures tell you in, in, in sirach uh, uh what is it uh i believe it's the 12th chapter in verse 10 never trust thine enemies man you know what i'm saying the lord gives us all the answers and, and two-thirds of our people don't want to accept these answers they don't want to accept the truth you know what i'm saying so those swords man but it says 22, cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. 
he shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. And that's the whole thing. We got moved. Why was that? Because Jake was being wicked, man. And if we were being righteous, he would have, these things would have never happened, which again, these things were, were, were ordained to happen. They were supposed to happen. You know what I'm saying? Because they're prophecy, you know? So it is what it is. But, uh, let's see, uh, let's go to second Thessalonians real quick. Because the Lord's allowing this devil to do the things that he's doing, man. You know what I'm saying? This is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse uh, 7. It reads, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. So that's letting you know he's going to be taken out of the way. But the Lord is allowing this devil to do everything that he's done and that, that he's still doing it to this very day. You know what I'm saying? Manifest destiny, it, it still exists, man, in these times, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, but hey, again, the Lord, he's, he, he, we just read it. The Lord is allowing this dude to do the things that he's doing until he be taken out of the way. And he's definitely going to be taken out of the way. So really quick, let's let's get a couple of uh, 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 examples of manifest destiny concerning Esau, Edom, man. You know what I'm saying? So real quick, let's go to, uh, let's go to Job. The 27th chapter, and we'll start at verse 13, I think. Job 27 and 13, manifest destiny for Esau, man. You know, these things are about to happen, you know. This is the portion of a wicked man with the Most High and the heritage of opp oppressors, which they shall receive of the Almighty, which they shall receive. These things are coming, man, of the Almighty, those oppressors, man. You know, they're oppressing Jake, Jake daily, man. You know what I'm saying? This is an oppressive a, 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 a society that we live in it's called despotism you know and it's the exercise of of of, of, of power uh by way of, of 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 cruel and oppressive meanings and ways or, or ways roughly paraphrasing man you know what i'm saying despotism you know that's what's set up here verse uh, 14 if his children be multiplied it is for the sword and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread yeah, his children that's being born in these times are going to be put to death, man. You know what I'm saying? It is what it, what it is, man. Or unalive or deleted. However you want to say it, it's all the same thing, man. You know what I'm saying? It says, and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. You know, we're going to do the same things to them that they did to us, man. They were starving us and our children out, and we're going to do the same thing to them, man. You know, it says, verse 15, those that remain of him shall be buried in death and his widows shall not weep. Yeah, because they're going to want uh, uh, Israelite men. You know what I'm saying? Their women ain't going to want them. They're not going to. We're going to have to make them get with their uh, 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 their their men so they can procreate and bring those uh, uh, that's that's going to uh, be deleted back into the earth for, for for punishment and judgment, man. You know, and, and to to, to uh, uh, you know. Do, uh, do out that uh that that those those captivity the slavery that they gonna have to go through for a, a thousand years man you know so to play that out so <clears throat> you know but hey these are things that are written about Esau concerning Esau manifest destiny let's get another one this is Jeremiah chapter forty nine and, and you know what let me read this in the NLT we won't get to the point well I'll read it in in the KJV then I'll get it in the NLT and I'm gonna start at verse seven you know because it's gonna let you know who it's talking about jeremiah 49 and 7 prophecy against edom right there in the heading concerning edom thus said the lord of hosts there it is so now let's drop down to the point so we notice talking about esau edom manifest destiny jeremiah 49 and 12 for thus said the lord behold they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken and that's going into the israelites because we're the chosen people of the lord man he set us up and we weren't we weren't supposed to go into slavery or uh, having anything, these all these negative things happen to us, but we had to go through it in order to know both sides, man. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's how the Lord, because the Lord is both. He has two sides, man. Uh, a righteous side and a uh, left hand, wicked side, a uh, carnal, whatever, however you want to word it. You know, he has two sides, Satan and, and on the left hand and and uh, uh, Yahweh on the right, man. Two sons. But it says, uh, <clears throat> They whose judge be for thus said the Lord, Yahbashim Yahushai, behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup, and that cup represents slavery, uh 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 double straits, death, 
uh, you know, nothing good, uh, d destruction, you know, nothing good, man. Uh, it says, have a surely drunken, which again are the Israelites, and art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? And that he represents Esau, Edom. We read that in the heading. It says, thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. So you're going to drink up that same cup, that cup of slavery, the, uh, you know, desolation, destruction, death, all these, these negative things, these negative connotations are about to be put on you people, man. You know what I'm saying? On your people, you, you so-called self-proclaimed white man, woman, and child, you know, Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter goes into that verse seven, you know, everything is about to be flipped. <laughs> you know, these are the times we in manifest destiny. Part two, that other side, it's about to begin soon. So real quick, let's take, uh, let's read that in the NLT real quick. I'm just going to parallel it. In the NLT to the right of your screen, this is Jeremiah 49 and verse 12. It says, and this is what the Lord says. If the innocent must suffer, which the innocent represents the Israelites, how much more must you go into Esau, Edom? You will not go unpunished. You must drink this cup of judgment. There it is. These, it's going to be the judgment of the Lord upon these people, man. You know, for manifest destiny. Although the Lord set them up to bring manifest destiny. You know what I'm saying? Got to understand the Lord, that the, the power that we're dealing with, man. <laughs> you know, and you got these Christians walking around talking about he's all love. They don't know nothing, man. And they need to shut the hell up and listen to the men that set up. To break these things down. So let real quick, let's go to uh, uh, Jeremiah. Let's get, we're just going to get a few more on that manifest destiny. This is Jeremiah 30 and verse 16. And it reads, Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity, and they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. These things are written, man, and they're faithful and true. You know, because the Lord is faithful and true. So his words are faithful and true, bro. So these things are written, man. The Lord says he's a man. He cannot lie. And he says in, in, in Isaiah, the 55th chapter and verse 11, that his word shall not, that he sends out, shall not come back to him void, but it, it shall accomplish the thing whereto he sent it, man. You know what I'm saying? So these things are guaranteed to happen. They're written. So our, our adversaries, uh, every one of them is going into captivity. These things are written. You know, this is manifest destiny. They took us into captivity, part of manifest destiny and put us to death. You know, so we going to be able to do the same thing back to them. The Lord is a, 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 a balanced power, man. A false balance is abomination to him. You know, what's that? Proverbs 11 and one, man. So if he left it like it is, then they've got one and we got zero. You put that on a scale, the scale is going to be tilted. He's got to even that back up by giving the same thing to his people, man. You know what I'm saying? And he promised these things and they're going to happen, man. You know, guaranteed. So real quick, let's get that in Revelations because that's what that reminded me of. It's Revelation chapter 13. And I'll start at verse 9. It says, if any man have an ear, let him hear. And that ain't talking about every man because all men have ears. So this is talking about special men that have spiritual understanding. Verse 10, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword here is the patience and the faith of the saints and we know who uh, uh the saints are you know it's the israelites pursuing the psalms 50 and 5 uh, uh psalms 148 uh in verse 14 psalms 149 verse 1 and 2 you know what i'm saying those are the those are the saints the israelites man it tells you in every one of those who that they're it's the israelites man and the patience represents suffering man here's the suffering and, and, and that faith of the saints man you know what i'm saying we the one had to go through this crap, man. You think it, it, it happened for nothing? No, bro. There's another side. So it says, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. So that means George, all the way back to George Washington and all them back then on into to, today's time with the transatlantic, uh, transatlantic slave trade. You know what I'm saying? So uh, he that killeth with the sword must be. It's a must that he be. You know, it was his blessing. The Lord gave him that the sword for his blessing. So that's what he was going to do. He's going to use it. Still using it to this very day. But he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. So trick bag, man. You know, that's a trick bag. But that's manifest destiny, man. So let's get one more. Let's go to Psalms real quick and end this thing off. This is Psalms 149. Uh, and we'll start around verse 
Uh, uh, six. We'll start at verse six. This is Psalms 149 and verse six. Manifest destiny. It says, let the high praises of the most high be in their mouth and a two edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bring Salaki to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So these things are written. The vengeance of the Lord is coming back on them. And the Lord is going to use his people to bring that vengeance. Uh, uh, vengeance. You know what I'm saying? These things, uh, what is that? Ezekiel. As a matter of fact, let's end it with that. Let's just get that real quick and we'll end it on that one. This is Ezekiel chapter 25. And I believe it's verse 14. We're going to get to the point. Con Ezekiel 25 and 14. And I will lay my, Salaki, and I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. And they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury. And they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord, power. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And that's what's going on, man. Manifest destiny has another side. Part two on the way. Get ready for it. So with that, giving all praises, honor, and glory due to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Karkwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect, the house of David, the Bayath, Shal Dawadat, Shalom.